Hello, and in this video, we're going to begin by setting up the rigid body simulation that forms the basic logic of this pile tool. To begin with, let's drop down a geometry node and double click to go inside. And I'm just going to load some proxy objects that I made to test with this tool as I build it. And let's just load those. So we've got this kind of wooden log. We've got a second one. And then also for the third one, we've got these kind of firewood bound by rope. So let's just use one for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to create multiple copies of this odd geometry and then run it through an RPD bullet solver. So we're going to run this simulation. Currently the log just falls down. So let's just come over to collision, down to ground type, and select ground plane, and then hit play. Now the geometry is already at origin, so it's not moving anywhere. So let's just drop down a transform node and move this up. Let me just show my timeline because currently it's hidden. I'm using keyboard shortcuts here, so up on the arrow key plays the timeline. Seeing it again. Pause the timeline and control up on the keyboard. Restarts it, resets it to frame one. If it's running really fast, if you hit this little clock icon down here, that will turn on the real time toggle. It's now a play at 24 frames per second. And obviously, you've only got one log here. So, what I want is lots of multiple copies of this wooden log that I can then run the simulation on so they all fall, hit the ground, and pile up on top of one another. So, to create those copies, I'm going to Create a grid. Let's make the size two by two and then reduce the rows to two and the columns to two as well and just orientate it in the X and Y plane. Okay, let's just move this up. And I'm going to drop down a scatter and a line. We don't see any points just yet, so let's just increase the coverage to one. And then we're going to change the point count method from size to density. Let's just increase this density. There we've got some points now. Come over to point generation and increase the relax iterations up all the way up to the top. That just distributes the points a little bit more evenly. Now what I want to do is I'll just delete this transform node for now. And I'm going to have a copy to points. So our geometry that we want to copy goes in on the first input. And the second input are our points from our scatter to point. There we go. Now you've got some geometry copied to these points. But they're all facing in the wrong direction. So on the scatter to a line, let's just come over to the orientation tab expand alignment and change the normal direction from Y to Z. And also the, they've um, been scaled down. So on the attributes tab, let's uncheck radius attribute. There we go, there they are copied to the points now and then the correct scale. And now let's pipe this into the first input on our bullet solver. And hit play. There we go, so now we have our geometry collapsing to the ground and we get the beginnings of a pile. Now to avoid them all kind of rolling away like this, I'm going to create a container to drop the geometry into. So to do that, after the copy to points, I'm going to add a box over here. And with this input with the copy to points as an input on the box, it will set this box to match the bounding box size of our copy to points. So this way our container will always be Big enough for our objects to fall into. I actually want to make it a little bit bigger. Let's add a peak and increase this distance here slightly. 0.5 would be enough. And I always want to make sure that this this uh, container is always sat on the ground. Currently, it's floating above the grid slightly. So after the after the peak, let's add a match size. 
Okay, and we don't need to translate it in the X and the Z, so let's set these from center to none. And set the justify on Y to min. And now that box is sat on the ground. With that done, we can now clip this container, and I can clip this box to, to, to turn it into an open container. On the toolbar here, select show handles, and we can move this up. There we go. Currently, it's clipping off the bottom, so let's change it from keep primitives above the plane to keep primitives below the plane. And I don't want to have to manually position this clip node, this clip. Uh, origin and do it um, using an expression so it will always automatically update without having us to manually position it and the expression I want to use is called centroid and so if we type centroid and then open brackets you get some information about how we can use this expression and the first input it needs is a service node so the node that we want to reference to get the center information of that could be a path to a node. Or if we type in zero, this will refer to the first input on the node. So currently we only have one input, but that input index is zero. And then if we hit comma, the second thing it needs is a type. And that's referring to either one of these here. So D underscore X underscore Y or under, underscore Z. That's referring to either one of the X or the Y or Z axis. And here we want the Y axis, so D underscore Y, and then close brackets. And as soon as we do that, the geometry is clipped in half from the center location of the box. I'm actually going to drop down transform. I just want to make it a little bit taller, so just so that we're sure it's going to contain our. Um, logs before they fall down. So currently it's only halfway up. So if we just scale it up on the y axis, let's say five, and we always know it's always going to be contained within our geometry. The last thing I'm going to do is just add a poly extrude. And let's just increase this distance and output back. So that gives us this solid container. Now, just turn onto wireframe so we can see through it. Now we on our bullet solver, attach this poly extrude to the fourth input, and as I hover over it, you can see there it says collision collision geometry. And let's make that visible. And now this blue wireframe here that's just showed up, that's showing that is our collision of geometry. If we turn off wireframe, we can see this blue container here. So let's just hit play on the viewport. And something's not working. The geometry is currently falling through the container. And that's because currently our container is set to be convex hull. Whereas ours, because we need to, to fall inside the container, it needs to be a concave object. Now, if we restart the timeline and hit play, we can see now they're falling out into the container and they're not falling out. Now, let's just come over to visualization and uncheck visualize geometries. Now we can see our objects. And let's untemplate this copy to points. And there we have it. So now our geometry is piling on top of one another. And so we get this kind of nice looking pile of wooden logs. Last thing at the end here I want to add is a time shift. And currently there is an expression in this frame parameter. Let's just delete that by right clicking and coming to delete channels. And we're going to type in 100 or frame 100. So now when I hit play, I've got this uh, time shift visible. You can see that simulation is no longer running. So we're now holding that simulation on frame 100. And this will be what we're outputting at the end of our 
digital asset. So let's just add a null and call this output. So this will be the end of our digital asset. And between this file and the copy to points, let's add a null here and call this input. So the user will input a geometry, a file, a static mesh into the asset. And out of the digital asset, they will get a pile of logs. And we're going to have some parameters the user can change so they can increase the number of objects, the size of the pile, and a few other different options. So this forms the very basics principle of our digital asset.